Hi everybody and welcome to Observing with Webb, where a high school astronomy teacher tells you what you're looking at, why it's so cool, and what you should check out next, at night, or in the morning. Now, don't forget to check out my Podbean page, uh, mrweb.podbean.com, uh, my YouTube channel, and my Twitter feed as well, uh, all at mrwebpv. Uh, and also you can get this as a podcast on Stitcher or iTunes. Uh, but anyway, this is February of 2018, and it actually is a rather uneventful month for beginner stargazers. Uh, but this is a good time to take advantage of a month-long lineup of Saturn, uh, Mars, and Jupiter in the mornings in the east, south, east, somewhere in that area. Uh, and the moon's going to be stopping by that area as well. So uh, make sure you check that out from the 7th to the 12th. That's when the moon's going to be there. And make sure you take some good pictures because that's a great time. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with uh, what you can see as far as planets go. Okay, so let's say you go out after sunset. Sunset is about uh, 5.23, somewhere around there in the beginning of the month. And let's, uh, let's go to like 6.30. Around 6.30, uh, there are no planets to see. You might be able to catch Uranus if you have a telescope, but really what you're looking at is Orion, and Taurus are up there looking really nice with Canis Major with the brightest star Sirius right nearby. But I was gonna talk about planets. So maybe there's some more planets as we go through the night. Well, let's fast forward time a little bit. And, oh, there's the moon in the beginning of the month hanging out by Leo the lion. And I'm not seeing any planets along. Oh, there we go. There's a planet. There's, the, uh, there's Jupiter around 3 a.m. So um, let me just fast forward to the morning because no one's getting up at 3 a.m. just for Jupiter. So <clears throat> if I get to, well, let's see. Sunrise is 7.12. So let's go back to about... Let's go to six o'clock, okay? And what you'll see over here in the southeast is a nice lineup of planets, okay? You've got Jupiter way up here in Libra. That's gonna be the brightest one that you can find. Down and to the left of that is Mars. And down to, and to the left of that is Saturn. It might help to see that Jupiter is in Libra. Mars is at, right at the head of Scorpio. And Saturn is right above Sagittarius. Each planet rises at its own particular time. Jupiter the earliest, since it's the highest, and that's around 2 a.m. in the beginning of February, midnight toward the end. Saturn uh, is rising around 5.15 in the morning, right nearby. And in between, Mars will rise at about 3.30 in the morning. So how is this view going to change throughout the month? Well, if you take a look right now, Saturn's low, Mars is in the middle, Jupiter's high, and it's going to remain that way but they are going to move a little bit by the end of the month. Saturn should be much higher and much easier to see. Mars will be just about the same and Jupiter should be higher and further over and visible from midnight into the morning. Now you might be wondering, hey, Webb, you left out Mercury and Venus. Well, you're right because Mercury, you really can't see. And if you wanna actually see Venus, well, that's a tough sell. Uh, what you would have to do is go to the end of the month, look at sunset, Look in the west, and you might be able to catch Venus there, uh, but that's gonna be a tough sell. Good luck. Um, you might have a better chance later in the year. So what events do we have going on? Well, uh, for the first week, we have a full moon. Granted, that's from last month, and in fact, February doesn't even have a full moon this year, and that's just a weird quirk in the Gregorian calendar. It just so happens that the full moon, the last full moon is January 31st, and the one at the end of the month is on March 1st, so it just happens. Now, what's going to happen that week after, though, uh, February 7th to the 12th? Okay, I know it goes to the 14th, but just go with me. Five days, it's good enough. Uh, but what you notice is that on the 7th, in the morning, let's say 6 a.m., you'll be able to see the first quarter moon. Uh, and you will also see Jupiter, Mars, and Saturn. Now what's going to happen is Jupiter, Mars, and Saturn will stay pretty much in the same spot, but the moon is going to pass through. In fact, on the 7th, the moon is just uh, 6 degrees up into the right of Jupiter. And then the next morning, 
you'll see that the moon is right in between Jupiter and Mars, but a little bit elevated as well. On the 9th, you'll notice that the moon is getting thinner. It's more of a waning crescent, and it is just above Mars and a little bit to the left, about 4 degrees. Now, if you're wondering how do I measure these degrees, well, uh, if you take an arm, the width of your fist at arm's length, that is about 10 degrees. Three fingers, right, right like that, like the width of that is about five degrees, and your pinky at arm's length is about one degree of the sky. And that works because everybody's body is proportional, whether you're a kid or an adult. Um, well, maybe the kids have a slightly different thing. You know, their heads are always way bigger than their bodies, but... The next morning, it'll be thinner and right in between Saturn and Mars. And on the 11th, you get a really good close encounter. About two degrees away uh, is Saturn, just below a very thin crescent moon. Should make a great picture. And then on the 12th, the moon sort of dips past Saturn and you have this really nice lineup. And if you look, uh, if we go from the moon all the way up to Jupiter, you're looking at 54 degrees uh, wide, which means uh, if you had a, a protractor, okay, this would be zero, this would be 90, um, that would be somewhere around here. That's a wide field of view that you're looking at. So if you have a camera and you want to get all of them, you got to have a pretty wide lens in order to do that. And that brings us to the new moon, which will be on the 15th, which means you can't see any moon at all. That'll be on the 15th. And then the only real happening is... Well, let's go to the 16th, and let's go to sunset, and now let's look west, and now you'll start seeing the moon popping up as an evening object. Okay. The moon's right there, All right. and you'll notice that every day it gets bigger, thicker, higher, and then on the 23rd is when we have the first quarter moon. We get a little darker there. First quarter moon, right above, right near Taurus there. That's the right half is lit up. You can see it uh, maybe a little bit afternoon. And if you can see during the daytime, if it's clear and into, well, about midnight when it sets. And then there's no more full moon. There, that's going to be on March 1st. So uh, that's pretty much it for the events for February. <laughs> Let's move on to some constellations. Uh, I already talked a little bit about Orion right here, and I've talked previous uh, videos about using Orion, uh, so I'm not going to go over that again. Just notice uh, that Orion's really nice and high in the sky, even at 7, and you can find the brightest star um, in Canis Major down here, the brightest star being Sirius. Um, and just another highlight is the Pleiades, see so if you can find those. Um, other than that, you'll start seeing Leo is starting to rise in the east. I think that's just a fun one to find. But let's take a pause and look at the north. Uh, we don't do that very often. So if we look at the north, they have the same five north circumpolar constellations. And right now, the Big Dipper is starting to rise up a little bit after, um, after sun, sunset. And uh, it's looking really nice, starting to get brighter, although it's low on the horizon near some light pollution, so it can be tough to see. Whoops. Uh, Draco's still going to be tough to see because it's down low on the horizon. Okay. However, uh, let me zoom in a little bit more. There we go. Uh, Cassiopeia is very high in the sky, very beautiful thing to find. I would even recommend trying to find uh, some objects here, okay, uh, like M103 right there if we zoom in little cluster of stars. Now, if you look throughout the night, what's going to happen is they're going to actually rotate all around this one central star, which I assume you all know, but maybe you don't. This is Polaris, otherwise known as the Pole Star. That's really all I got for you for February. Um, just get out there in the mornings to see if you can check out the planetary alignment. No, not the planetary alignment, the planetary lineup, uh, and then Take some pictures and send them to me. I'd love to share them with the world. So anyway, um, I'd like to wish you all very clear dark skies for the month of February.